I sacrificed my 20s to get rich, and I'm here to tell you if it was actually worth it or not. My name is Eric Sue. I'm the founder of an eight-figure marketing agency called Single Grain, and we worked with clients like Uber, Amazon, Salesforce, Airbnb, and more. And I'm gonna jump straight into the part around ambition. So. Early days for me, what really drove me, what really gave me the ambition. So some of you might be interested in sports. My interest was really in video games growing up. And so played a lot of StarCraft, Warcraft, Command and Conquer, Diablo, played World of Warcraft, EverQuest, uh, Counter-Strike, a lot of these different games growing up. Let, played a lot of poker as well. And, and it was through these games that I really learned the value of camaraderie, of teamwork, the value of hard work and what it really took to do the most elite things that you can do. And so I, I had a big hunger around that. Also, because of my childhood years, my parents always told me that I was below average or I was behind. I, I just never wanted to feel like I would be left behind again. And so that really developed my hunger for games to get good, to stand out in games. And everyone has a chip on their shoulder at the end of the day. It's really how you go about using that that chip. And so that was kind of the, the early ambitions for for me. And that's that I would I can tell you that that's all translated to entrepreneurship today. And my hunger for success is, you know, my, my whole thinking behind this was if other humans can build amazing businesses, if they can, you know, build these games or they can build these teams or build up their characters, why can't I do it? What's so special about them? And so I realized that at a young age that if I can just learn to channel my energy for games into the, the, the game of life, I would be fine. I just need to figure out what that was. And fortunately enough, I found out later that business is the ultimate game. And just you know, playing these games at the highest level taught me that I needed a team and I needed to work long, hard hours in order to, to be elite. And I, I just remember some of the stories you know, in World of Warcraft, we had this guild. It was on a PvP server. You know, we were like on the alliance side, and then there's the horde, obviously. And these are opposing factions. And um, you know, when a world boss would pop, meaning that you know, in, in like a contested area, if a boss would pop up that had valuable loot, if we killed them, um, if they popped up, our guild leader would call us at three, four a.m. And so, you want to talk about the value of hard work? We all awoke, probably forty or fifty of us. We all got up at that time. And, you know, if you didn't show up, you know, you'd be chastised for that. And, you know, we weren't out there to kill the boss. First and foremost, we're out there to demoralize the other team, kill them over and over and over. We wake up at 3 a.m., kill them till 6 a.m. until they're completely demoralized. They just had no, no shot against us. And then we would kill the boss and then we'd go to sleep. Right. And then we'd probably wake up, go to sleep at like 7 a.m. and then wake up at, I don't know, let's say 1 or 2 p.m. or so, eat some lunch and get right back to playing World of Warcraft. And uh, that's what it takes to be successful in, in business, right? You have to be very dedicated. And at the time, I was like 18 years old. I was that, I, that was my craft. I was dedicated to that. And so whatever you find it is for you, whether it's tennis or whether it's, it's Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something like that, which I, I love both of those things. Um, but it, it, as long as you find that and you learn how to channel it into, into business, um, you know, that's going to help drive you at the end of the day. And that's what still drives me today. Um, I just feel like I'm playing a, a video game every single day. Right. So think about what, 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 what has driven you, um, as a child, and then think about how that can apply to your real life. And, you know, ultimately what really motivated me long-term is, you know, we'll look at family members fighting all the time about, about money. That's, that's not cool. And so financial freedom, very important. Um, wanting to carve my own path, not having to listen to someone else to do it. Um, so overall freedom and do what I wanted to do. Um, I think that is the very definition of success. It's, it's waking up every day and working on what you want to work on. Um, to me, it's not really a monetary number. Um, that's just a, it's a nice scorekeeper, but if you can work on what you want to work on every single day and there, there aren't any huge outside influences, then absolutely do it to control my own destiny and, uh, never feeling like I I'm being left behind again. And obviously I, I think the main thing that drives me, if you're looking behind me right now is, the ability to learn and the ability to teach, that's what really drove the the ambitions, right? And, and so when I look at all the success in gaming, um, a lot of it has translated over. The World of Warcraft example, just to that one example, that's what it takes to actually succeed. And that, that really motivates me, right? All right, agency owners, if you want to grow faster, my partner, Neil Patel, and I, we are hosting live agency owner workshops in Beverly Hills. And you're going to learn how to get more clients. You're going to learn how to take yourself out of the day-to-day. -day. You're going to learn how to recruit the right people. And you're going to be hanging out with people, like-minded people such as yourself. So if you want to learn more, just go to marketingschool.io slash agency. Again, it's marketingschool.io slash agency. And we'll see you on the other side. One thing I will say too is, that 
you can have ambition, but there's going to be loneliness. So this is kind of going into my 20s or so when when I really started to work on on business, probably around 22 or so, I really started to get into personal growth and then started to really get and understand that, oh, okay, I'm going to learn marketing. And then it's like, okay, what's the next step? Oh, I actually need to learn learn business, right? So there's levels to everything. There's a boss at every level that you have to that you have to defeat. And um, so what started happening was maybe early 20s or so, I was still going out with my friends. We're going to music festivals. We're going to clubs and things like that. And that probably went until 25. But even 22 to 25, I was still thinking about this stuff all the time. I probably around 25, I started to realize that one, I like, I really don't enjoy drinking. I don't enjoy the hang- hangover. I don't enjoy eating junk food like carne asada fries or eating Carl's Jr. or McDonald's or In-N-Out. Um, and it all tasted amazing, right? But, you know, staying up to 4 or 5 a.m. and then sleeping in late that didn't seem like I was making the most of my time. And I would just say that when you have that knot in your stomach, you should probably trust that gut feeling. Um, I wish I trusted that gut feeling a little earlier. Um, but I would just say, you know, probably around 25 or so, I started to be like, okay, I'm going to focus more on the business side of things. And things very quickly started to take off. So at 25, I was working um, as a, the, the lead marketer for an online education startup. And in 26, I joined an, an agency. And then 27, I, I actually took over the agency, which I own today, which is called Single Grain. Um, and, you know, that was a whole buyout situation, right? So very quickly, I started to lock in. I remember when I first took over the agency, 27 years old, we went on a ski trip and I, I didn't even go skiing with them. I just stayed in the house to work on the business because there was so much stuff happening. It was, it was early January or so, and we were transitioning control of the company over to me. And there's just a lot that I had to deal with. Um, and I, 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 I think that trip, and now that I'm thinking through, as I'm talking real time right now, like that was when maybe I started to feel, okay, things are starting to separate a little more. Um, and you know, I'm not saying like, I'm, I'm not, um, I don't talk to any of these friends anymore. I was just saying that we're, we're just not as close anymore. And these are people that I grew up with in elementary school and in high school and college and people that, you know, we, we've, we've done a lot of cool things together. We've made a lot of memories together and I would always be invited by these people too, um, to go out all the time, you know, on the weekends. And then the problem is once you start to decline these, these invitations, you don't show up as much. The invites start to disappear and I'm not blaming them at the end of the day. That's just what started to happen. Um, but I will say though, that, um, you start not going out as much. You start missing out on memories. You start not getting invited as much. You start to kind of lose the, the friends that you had, meaning that you're not as close anymore. Right. And you start to, as you separate. So as you, as you continue to focus more on the business and then they're, they're doing their thing, um, people will start looking at you a little differently. And my mom has even said this to me before because I have, a, I have a rich uncle and my mom said, you know, before this rich uncle, he didn't do well in school and uh, I didn't do well in school. And, um, you know, but when he started to take off with his business, people are just like, whoa, like what's going on. Right. And it's like, oh, you, you've changed quite a bit. And earlier this week, I was talking to a friend, um, you know, her, her in-laws family, they were kind of looking down on her when she started a business. And then when the business really started to take off, they kind of looked down on her even more like, like, who are you? Right. Kind of thing. Um, and so I think the key thing to understand is that you will get a lot more lonelier as you're starting out, especially the early years, because you have nothing going on. You know, you're starting out the business, you're, you're failing forward. Right. And, uh, you have no network built out because you've done nothing. You've accomplished nothing. And so it's going to be very lonely in those early years. Um, and you just have to understand that the air gets thinner as you climb higher, but also understand that when you climb higher, there's a lot more people up there waiting for you. Um, it's really the, the beginning stages where you're kind of just eating poo poo by yourself. And so, you know, for me, I was working seven days a week. And, um, again, like, you know, I, I went to the, there's a, there's a music festival called EDC and I went to the EDC, I went to EDC for, for many years. And, uh, but I, I've, in the very beginning of my twenties, I'll go to almost every single music festival. Right. Um, but I started going to less and less and less and, um, you know, wouldn't go out as much anymore. Wouldn't go clubbing anymore. And, um, you know, I just, like I mentioned earlier, just gradually started to see less invites and, um, I would hear things, you know, from the grapevine, um, around, around Eric, you know, that, that, that guy, Eric, like he had nothing going for him before. And I had nothing going for me before, like from an academic standpoint in, in high school, um, even in college as well. It's like, you know, I almost get, got kicked out of high school, almost got kicked out of college. Um, and you know, they're like, yeah, Eric really had nothing going for him. And, and, you know, I, it, it seems like a miracle to see his trajectory now. Right. So you, you hear the word miracle and it, it kind of tilts me a little bit to, to hear that. Um, I remember almost getting in a, a fight with, um, a friend who didn't like the fact that I was working on my phone. And I, this was at, at a gathering with friends and I actually went into a separate room to 
kind of knock out a couple of things. And then he kind of, you know, walked into the room and, and, and then walked towards me and it escalated very quickly. And, uh, you know, I don't think that relationship has ever been the same since, since, since then. Um, uh, but you know, I would just notice that the way people would talk to me would be a little different. It used to be that, you know, when we hang out all the time, it would just be all in fun and games. Um, and you know, I'm a pretty laid back guy. I, I would say I'm a pretty goofy guy even. And I, I like to kind of joke around a bit, but you know, that I would say that that's, um, that's kind of gone, gone away. And, you know, if we do ever see each other, it's, it's, it's a lot more cordial. Um, but you know, I would just say that, look, the, the cycle of loneliness, when you're starting out, this is when you're sacrificing your twenties. Um, you need to be prepared for it. It's very mentally taxing. Um, but you also need to understand that you're not the first one to go through it. And anyone that's built any generational business or done anything interesting, they've gone through these moments of loneliness. This is the moment where you start to, this is your, your, your origin story, right? You're going through all the struggles. This is, these are your moments of struggle because th it really affects you mentally. And it, to be honest, it hurts, right? It's, um, to not have the same lifelong friends that you've had. Um, it's painful and I get a little emotional thinking about this, right? Cause we just made so many, many memories, but you have to understand that you're sacrificing your twenties to build for the long term, and hopefully set your, your family up for success. And then hopefully maybe another generation or two, cause typically money is squandered in three generations, but just understand that it, it's, um, you know, we'll get to whether I thought it was worth it at the end of it, but just understand that this moment, even as I'm talking through it is, is very painful. Um, but you also have to realize that, you know, as we talk through like, well, okay, is this actually worth it? Like, what is the point of all this at the end of the day? Um, you know, I'm thinking through this, it's like, okay, sure. The money's starting to roll in. I remember at age, um, 27, 28 or so, that's when we started doing that, that year, this was all affiliate income, which was, you know, we didn't have any employees. We're doing like seven, $800,000 a year in profit, which is really good. Right. Um, and you know, at that time, it's like, I can start to see this thing really start to start, start to compound because before I, I was maybe making like, you know, um, call it 200 grand a year or something like that. Right. Which is a great salary. But, um, once I, once I had that unlock, I was, and, and I had taken the risk already the, the loneliness piece, the, the monetary risk as well. Um, I started to see, you know, in a couple of years that this thing started, started to take off and it took about, I would say it took, took about three years to start to, to realize that. Um, but you know, sure the money was coming in, but I was thinking to myself, you know, what was the cost? Right. And I just mentioned to you, um, a lot of my, I would say childhood friends, it's just the relationships weren't the same anymore. Not that I lost them or anything. Um, but you know, what I did realize was that the true friends stuck around the true friends still continue to FaceTime, text me all the time, call me all the time. And these were the ones that wouldn't fall off. And I also understood this, the human psychology behind this all, right? Because at the end of the day, if you see someone that didn't do so well academically or even socially, and to see them start to rise, it does start to hold up a mirror to your face and be like, if that's, this guy can do it, why can't I do it? Right. Type of thing. Um, I think I've certainly had those feelings in the past and I just understand this is all human psychology and I'm okay with it. You have to make peace with it if you want to get through these trials. Right. Um, and you start to look around, it's like you, you, your head down the whole time. And in the moment you look up, it's like, oh crap, man, I'm a lot lonelier than I was before. And, um, I think just understanding that as you climb up, there's still other people climbing with you and you, it, it's helpful for you to meet like-minded friends. And so I guess talking about the ambition piece leading up to the, then the sacrifice, one of the sacrifices being that you're going it, to, it's going to become very lonely. Um, but the question then leads up to if this is all worth it at the end of the day, is, is it, is it worth sacrificing, you know, five, 10 years of your twenties to go through this? And I would say, unequivocally, I wouldn't trade it for the world. All right, quick note, this is about my company. It's called Single Grain and Single Grain is an ad agency where we're focused on driving innovation. And so I wanna talk about a couple of new strategies and if you need help with marketing, great. If not, here are a couple of new strategies that you should try out. One is programmatic CRO. So we are doing programmatic conversion rate optimization on our site. We're building products that will automatically optimize your site to increase conversion rates. We're also auto optimizing, auto updating, uh, from a, from an SEO standpoint. And we're constantly thinking about what else we can do in terms of enriching the visitors that are hitting your website and also tailoring custom messages for them using AI. And so there's a handful of things that we're doing from a marketing standpoint, and our mission is just to drive more innovation. So if you want to learn more, just go to singlegrain.com, grain like rice. So singlegrain.com to learn more, and we'll see you inside. I wouldn't trade it for the world. 
And the reason I say that is because I, I think about the places I've traveled to. I, I've traveled to Japan. I've traveled to Germany. I've traveled to Poland. I've traveled to Ukraine. I've traveled to Germany, France, Netherlands, all these cool places in the world to speak at a lot of conferences, speak in Hong Kong, speak in Australia. And I, I just gained so much life perspective. I met so many amazing people around the world because of business, because business is your ultimate goal with business is to help other people. And Zig Ziglar likes to say, help others get what they want and you get whatever you want. And in business, that's exactly what you're doing. You're helping consumers, you're helping other business owners, you're helping the employees of those companies, you're helping your employees, you're helping the families of your employees, right? And it feels good to be that provider. And the friends I made are the most incredible people in the world. I remember when I traveled to Japan, I was part of this group called Entrepreneurs Organization. And this guy that runs a $200 million a year company publicly traded, he took me to the fish market um, where they do the auctions in Japan at 3.30 in the morning. Did he need to do that? No, he brought his driver to pick me up and then I went with him. We eat sushi at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I ended up hiring his daughter for a year and I'm, I'm actually gonna see him, his daughter and some other people that I, I know in Japan in a couple weeks or so. Um, and you see this, these are relationships that continue because everyone's helping each other out. And um, the communities I've joined, you know, have, have helped me meet lifelong friends and have also helped me with my business. So I mentioned Entrepreneurs Organization, EO, there's YPO as well. I always like to talk about these groups. Um, in these groups, these people have all been through these trials before where the ambition kicks off and then it gets lonely for a period of time. They have to go through a lot of trials and then at the very end of it, is it worth it? And you know, the ones that actually went through that sacrifice, it humbles them at the end of the day. It matures them. And I believe that, you know, as a human being, you, you've elevated yourself to the next level by, by being able to do that. Because again, business is fundamentally about helping other people. And the ones that have been through those trials, I can tell the ones that haven't they're they have a large ego and I would prefer to hang out with those people anyway. And just your, your interests change over time too. What, what am I interested in now? I'm interested in learning about what's happening new in technology, what's happening with the future. I'm interested in living longer as well. I'm interested in things that help with um, my physical activity and my mental health as well. You know, we're talking about jujitsu earlier. We talked about tennis and I, I love traveling around the world with my like-minded friends too. And they can afford these, these, these trips too. And you know, there's no complaining about, Hey, the, the cost or anything like that. And I, re I realized that that's, that's like a very first world um, things to, thing to say. Um, but just understand if you sacrifice your, your first, you know, your, you know, your twenties, maybe five to 10 years of your twenties, and you really push through it, you grind through it. I would say that I, I have no regrets trading off the additional parties. In fact, I would have traded off more of those parties at the end of the day because I, I would have gotten to where I wanted to go faster. And in, in life, there's no perfect solution. There's only trade-offs. And the trade-off was my 20s. But now I'm set up, I believe, my mind is really set up for the rest of my life because those 10 years, you learn so much. You, you might think you learn a lot from college or high school, but the school of hard knocks teaches you the most. It's, it's the school of making it happen that teaches you the most. And in those 10 years, my God, you're setting the foundation for the future and you're still gonna to continue to learn, but you've built that learning habit, you've built that humility, and you've built that habit of also building relationships with other people. And I, I'm an introvert, by the way. Um, a lot of people think I'm extroverted, but um, you just learn how to do these things over time. And the sooner you learn to do these things, the better. So that's what I would say, absolutely, it was worth it. The final thing I'll say to you is, um, you know, as we, as we wrap, so absolutely, you know, sacrifice your twenties, in my opinion, it's worked out well for me. Um, and I, I want to leave you with this. Once you start a business, there's going to be a lot of excruciating pain to, to get things started up, to get things moving. Just, just a couple of years ago, um, my eight figure agency almost failed, right? Where this is the lowest point it's ever been, but then we transitioned and then it went to the highest point it's ever been, that the fastest it's ever grown, right? So if you want to check out that video, so I talk about the trials and tribulations in here to, 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 get, to, to get, get to single grain, right? But I want to talk about the highs and lows and how you can actually recover uh, in that video. So again, we'll talk about how I almost had to bankrupt the company to basically in under a year, uh, turn it around to be the fastest growing that, that it's ever grown, right? So check out that video somewhere over here and we'll see you on the other side.